didn't see you there. I was just trying to be like Spider-Man on my new police station. What's going on guys? Welcome to Baruki. In today's video I want to talk about how I made this cable pulley machine. And for those of you who are doing calisthenics, you're probably wondering why is this video important to me? Well, I'm going to tell you, this piece of equipment is not going to be for my main exercises. It's usually going to be for prehab, rehab, mobility, all of that good stuff. So, this machine is good to warm up your triceps with some tricep extensions, to get some good external rotation with some face pulls. This is why I'm going to use this one also for the regular bicep and tricep extensions, all of that good stuff, but not for main exercises. Enough of me talking, let me show you its features and then we're going right into the build. For those of you who saw the reverse hyper machine, I made it a little bit shorter and smaller so it takes less space, but that's not what the video is all about, it's just a side note, but this cable pulling machine is both for pulling from above as well as pulling from below. The great thing about this is you have a bigger exercise selection if you can pull from both sides. Obviously you can't do both simultaneously, you can switch it up by just doing like this. So this thing is ready for some plates. You just take your weight, whatever you want. I'm going to use a 15 kilo just for demonstration purposes. And then you, oh look at that ass. Then you just slap it on there, boom. You have your weights, you have your plates, you go and you row. So this is how it goes. It also has some nice uh, other features that you can hang your attachments to. I didn't make these ones myself, they're just bought on a fitness seller website. So that's about the features. Um, quick uh, recap, it can hang the attachments. You have pulling from above, pulling from below and it's plate loaded. Onto the build. So the first thing that you have to look for when you're building this is that this has to be high enough so you can put your biggest plates on there. My biggest plate is a 45 centimeter diameter plate. So that means that underneath here, this part, I'm going to have at least 20 centimeters. So I went with 21 centimeters so I have enough space here. So you can see my biggest plate it goes on there and it has a little uh, room underneath there. So this is one piece. Unfortunately I didn't have this part on camera but I can really quickly show you how I made this. Basically what I did was I took a piece of wood. It was about three meters long. The width is about 140 millimeters and the thickness is 18 millimeters thick. Okay, so what I did was I cut this up in equal lengths of 20, uh, 20 centimeters. Uh, I was lucky enough to borrow a table saw to do this because having something to do like this by hand is a very difficult task. Now. I did this one, cut this one up and with each and every piece what I did was I found the center of it and then I drilled two holes that were symmetrically along this line and they were 44 millimeters wide in diameter. Now this, the middle of these two is about 10, centi is 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters apart. So that's basically how I made this one and then it's just rinse and repeat and make as lot of these as until you get to your height. So the reason I made these holes is so that the guiding post can go right through them and can guide the block as it goes up and down when you're using the cable pulley. Also for some of the blocks I drilled a hole in the middle so I can so I can attach a ring to it. So to attach the ring to the block I just 
threaded it in using the threads on the ring itself. It's a very long piece, so there will be enough support. Eventually, I just added a washer and a nut to the bottom side, so everything was attached securely. Then we're going on to the part where the plates are going to be. I just used some clamps to clamp them in place. Then I pre-drilled the holes, which is very necessary in everything that I did here. Uh, if I didn't pre-drill, the wood would crack and it would split and the integrity of the wood would suffer. So everything you see here is pre-drilled. So I pre-drilled here and I put some screws of 15 centimeters in there just to be sure that the weight is not going to pull the supporting beams out of there. Because the screws were so long, I had to use a wrench to just make sure that the final threads were going in there and then it's done. For the piece that's going underneath the weight carrying block, I'm going to use a piece of rubber. This thing is just going to be on the ground and is also made with the two holes where the posts are going into. And then we're going to use some rubber flooring. Uh, I just used rubber flooring I had left over from the gym. And uh, you can use literally any rubber flooring just to dampen it when your weights go down that it's not wood on wood. So I used rubber. I drilled it with just a regular drill. I used also a 44 millimeter uh, drill bit just to get those big holes. It's going very easy in rubber. What I thought was very funny is that whenever you drilled in the screws to attach the rubber to the block is that they just disappeared completely, which is very neat. For the upper pulley beam I used uh, some thicker wood that was 26 millimeters thick and only 100 uh, millimeters wide. Uh, the, the blocks themselves the blocks themselves were 60 centimeters long and uh, I cut two equal sides two equal pieces and attach them in one side uh, with a equal piece of wooden block. Just a scrap piece that I had laying around. I put it in there so it was supported. And then I put some L brackets on there so I can attach this horizontal beam to the wall. So on the wall I used a regular piece of wood that I just uh, bolted onto the wall and then the horizontal pulley beam is going to be attached right to that. Now obviously this is not going to the main support for the weight. The main support is a support beam that is going to take care of the structural integrity of the whole construction. So the supporting beam is made out of three pieces of wood that are the same thick thickness, that are the same thickness and wideness as the horizontal pulley beam. So what it happens is the middle one goes right into the pulley beam where you can attach these together and then the other two, the other two are going to just support the horizontal pulley beam. To make it very strong I glued these three parts together and I bolted them down every 60 centimeters. Then I just had to jam it under the horizontal pulley beam and the structure was great. So in order to make the base as strong as possible, I used a four centimeter thick slab of plywood, which I got from an old table. And there I can put the beam on and use some L brackets to attach it all together. Now, remember that the middle part of the beam is slightly longer than the outer parts and that is so it can pass right into the upper pulley beam and then we can just bolt that together so we have a strong and nice connection. Now onto the grind of this build. Obviously safety is number one priority so whenever you're grinding make sure you use eye and ear protection as I did. So now we're onto the guiding beams for the guiding beams, we want the cable to pass right into the middle. And in order to attach the guiding beams onto the um, horizontal pulley beam, we have to use some of these connectors. And these connectors don't allow space for the cable to pass through. So I had to cut a little V notch in there so the cable can pass through. 
A very important thing when you're attaching these guiding posts is that you already put the stop block and the block for the weights in there, otherwise there won't be any chance of getting those parts in into your build and you're going to have to unscrew everything. So be sure that you already assemble everything and then shove it right in. I screwed the guiding posts to the upper pulley beam as I said earlier to a block of wood just to have a nice stable base and then on the bottom I just screwed it into the, the plywood and then it was good to go. Didn't have to attach, didn't have to attach the uh, stop block because it won't move a thing. Okay onto the lower pulley block this one needs to be both attached to the bottom and to the structural supporting beam. The reason being is if you're going to pull on it, you can you need to be pulling, you need to be both pulling upwards for if you're doing bicep curls, and you need to be pulling away from the cable pulley machine if you're doing rows. So it has to support both of these movements. It has to be tightly secured to everything. Okay. So I made this just with two little uprights uh, which are going to attach to the floor with some L brackets and I'm also going to attach it with another piece of wood onto the supporting beam. It's really easy. You can do it. So the focus in my mind at that point was so big that I had to use the camera's focus. So that's why it's a little bit blurry. This pulley block is obviously also where a pulley wheel is going to come so we need to have we need to make sure that we have the right amount of holes so a bolt can go through and the pulley wheel can be attached so that's what you're seeing right here to make a cable pulley machine you need one cable to a pulley so we're going to add the pulley wheels first the most difficult one is the one that's going to be directly above the weight block because this one has to be positioned precisely. So when the cable comes down to the weight block, there can't be any bends or there can't be any angles. It has to be straight down. So that's something you have to look for. For the other two wheels, you just have to make sure that they can pass smoothly. So that's that. In order to attach the wheels, I used the bolt. So I first drilled a hole in there so the bolt can go through it. Then I put a washer on the bolt, then I put the bolt through the wood, I put the pulley wheel in, I put another washer onto it, and then I just push it all the way through the second piece of the wood, and then I use the washer and a nut, and then screw it all together. And then you have a tight connection, you have the pulley wheel, and then it's just rinse and repeat for the three wheels, and then we're going on to the cables. For the cable, I used a 6mm cable that's strong enough to hold at least 100 kilos of weight. I also used one that has a plastic coating so it doesn't rub on the pulley wheels. That's very good. Then I used some guides to uh, make the loops. So as you can see, I opened up the guide a little bit so it can pass through the loop, uh, to the loop on the weight block, and then I just looped the cable, then I looped the cable through it, attached it with the, uh, with the attachments that were included and then it's just rinse and repeat. One thing that's very important here is uh, the end of the cable needs to be just coming out of the pulley wheel to have the most range of motion on your cable pulley machine and that's about it. let's keep this video under 15 minutes thank you so much for watching i hope you liked this video if you did hit that like button don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and let me know in the comments down below if you have more questions about this build and i'll be seeing you all in the next video peace